In this video, we will talk about how both living and non-living components of this planet interact with one another. Think of the series of things that you do from the moment you wake up. You brush your teeth, wash your face, for that you need water. Then maybe you sip some water as well. Then you have some nice breakfast. Maybe some aloo paratha or dosa or some bread with eggs and a glass of milk. Now, aloo paratha needs wheat and potatoes that comes from plant. Dosa is made from rice, which is plant again. Bread with eggs and milk calls in both plants and animals. So you see where I'm going with this? By being members of this beautiful planet, we are all dependent on one another. And we show this dependence by constantly interacting with one another. In simple terms, Every part of this planet, be it living or non-living, is always bumping into one another and affecting each other, often without even realizing. By the way, the living organisms in the environment are called the biotic components and the non-living ones are called the abiotic components. When biotic and abiotic components interact in a place, we call it an ecosystem. And ecosystems can be large, like in forest, river or grassland, or it can also be quite small, like a single banyan tree buzzing with birds, squirrels and insects. And when we talk about ecosystems, we broadly talk about the aquatic ecosystem, like ponds, rivers and lakes, and the terrestrial ecosystem, like forests, grasslands and farms. There are human-made ecosystems as well, like farmland or even a garden. And ecosystems can overlap. A river, which is aquatic, winding through a forest, which is terrestrial, means that the two are constantly influencing each other. How? Animals drink at the river. Frogs lay eggs near the bank. Birds hunt fish from the overhanging branches. Can you think of more ways in which organisms in these two ecosystems interact? Let me know in the comments below. Now, the interactions within an ecosystem can be sorted into three major boxes. Biotic-abiotic interactions, biotic-biotic interactions and abiotic-abiotic interactions. First of all, let's start by looking at some example of biotic-abiotic interactions. In an aquatic ecosystem, fishes laying eggs in water are biotic components interacting with abiotic ones. Another example would be fish needing dissolved oxygen in water to breathe. In a terrestrial ecosystem, have you seen earthworms dig holes in moist soil and live there? So earthworms, a biotic component, is dependent on soil which is an abiotic component for its survival. Now think about it. Is the soil also dependent on earthworms? Actually, yes. As earthworms burrow and loosen the soil, they increase air spaces so air and water can move better. Secondly, earthworms, they feed on soil and break it down to simpler compounds by digestion. These simpler compounds are then released back into the soil as warm castings. And these warm castings are rich in nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium that increase soil fertility. Can you think of more examples of biotic and abiotic interactions in terrestrial environments? What about plants depending on sources of water and sunlight for photosynthesis? Also, what about soil depending on plant roots to save them from possible erosions? Think about it. But for now, let's move on to biotic-biotic interactions. In an aquatic ecosystem, we see fishes feeding on worms. Even fishes laying eggs near vegetation to protect them from other fishes or frogs is an example of biotic-biotic interactions. In the terrestrial ecosystem, we see lions hunting deers and deers munching on grass. And in both these ecosystems, we see plants depending on carbon dioxide released by humans and animals for photosynthesis. All of these are examples of biotic-biotic interactions. 
On this note, plants as we know cook their own food using carbon dioxide released by other organisms alongside water and sunlight. Such organisms that can make their own food are called as autotrophs. Auto meaning self and troph meaning food. Other organisms that depend on plants or animals for their food are called as heterotrophs. Hetero meaning others and troph meaning food. Heterotrophs can further be divided into three main categories. Organisms that feed only on plants, they are called herbivores. Examples include cows and deers. Then we have organisms that feed only on animals, we call them carnivores. For example, tigers and lions. And then we have the ones that kind of eat both plants and animals, like us. We are the omnivores. But organisms don't just depend on each other for food. We depend on plants for oxygen. Animals depend on plants for shelter as well. Some plants, for example leguminous plants, partner with a bacteria called rhizobium to help it fix atmospheric nitrogen. Basically, different biotic-biotic interactions serve different purposes. Also, not all interactions are about helping each other. Sometimes they compete too. Fishes can compete with each other for insect larvae. Plants in a forest compete for sunlight. Birds may compete for nesting sites on the same tree. Competition is actually healthy. It helps maintain balance by preventing any one population from exploding. We'll talk more about this in the subsequent videos. Now let's move on to the abiotic-abiotic interactions. Our clothes dry faster on a sunny, warm, breezy day as water evaporates fast because of sunlight and temperature and wind teaming up. We get to enjoy the beautiful waves by the beach as wind over water creates ripples and waves at the surface. In summary, we learned how biotic and abiotic components are in constant conversation for food, shelter and protection. We named that conversation as an ecosystem. And there are two major kind of ecosystems that we focused on today in this video. Aquatic ecosystem and terrestrial ecosystems. And we saw the different kinds of interactions in both of these ecosystems. The biotic-abiotic interactions, the biotic-biotic interactions and even the abiotic-abiotic interactions. Now remember in the beginning of the video we also mentioned about man-made ecosystems, farmlands and gardens. Can you think of the different ways in which organisms interact in these two ecosystems? Let me know in the comments below.